Hello everyone, this is Dwayne Wright, and in this series of movies, we're going to discuss the use case. Now, what I'm going to do is talk about the use case as it applies to a tool that I created that helps you author use cases in a very quick and flexible format. So let's get started. So this is your classic use case. They will change a little bit here and there, but it is a series of components that describe a particular scenario. And they're designed for a business and a technical domain to agree upon how something should work. Now this particular use case came out of a book called Software Requirements 3rd Edition. It's been very well received by the BA domain in general and I found it fantastic myself. And in fact when I was reading the use case area that's when I got the inspiration to create the tool and then later on this movie. So again I want to just show you a little bit of the evolution of the tool. The very first version that I had looked like this. And we'll cover this in a little more detail, but the inspiration is that you would have each one of these particular areas become a field inside of the database. And then the system would automatically concatenate this information in a pre-described manner. And then once it's built, you could copy and paste it into Microsoft Word and then create your overall BA documentation from there. And this worked okay when I was designing it, but then when I started to use it, I decided that I wanted to go with something a little bit more like this. And in this instance, what I was able to do is to have all my data entry on the left hand, or excuse me, on the right hand side, and automatically see the updates on the left hand side. So as soon as I would add data here, I could automatically see how it looked over to the right. So this is a look at the database uh, in a larger view. And this product was built with a tool called FileMaker Pro. It's a subsidiary of Apple. It's been around for, gosh, 20, 30 some odd years. Uh, probably closer to 30, come to think about it. It is cross-platform, works on Mac and Windows. And it also allows you to quickly web enable the databases. And it also has a mobile companion product as well. So that's kind of what it looks like if you wanted to do pretty it up. So in my versions are very basic and they're clean and they work for me. But if you wanted to put in the time and effort, you could create a drop dead gorgeous user interface to these databases. So again, to iterate in this larger view, in here, a particular field, in this case, the title of the use case, when that's entered, it automatically gets concatenated into this larger text string in a more presentable format. So there's your title. Uh, there's your primary actor, secondary actors. You can see where that shows up. Um, and your description and how the description. And so that's how it's built. So going back to that use case example from the Software Requirements 3rd Edition book, it looks like it's just all one big piece. And it is after it's been combined together, but it's really a series of components. And there are three main groupings of these components, at least how my tool handled it. Um, there was the header area where you had some of the, the basic information that describes what's going to happen next. So kind of your classic presentation format, tell you what it's going to tell you, then tells you. So then this is more or less the meat. This is often where the developer would go right in. And that's your preconditions and your post conditions of this scenario. And then what the normal flow of the scenarios and then any possible alterations to that flow that could happen based upon more environmental conditions or if someone chooses a different option. And then some of the exceptions that can happen to that particular flow. 
And then finally, there's a bit of a wrap up. A lot of these are just basically metadata. Um, and that would be, you know, the prioritization, how often it's used, uh, any other information, assumptions. So these all really affect the flow. They're more metadata, you know, data that describes the data. So let's just talk about, I guess we'll just call it like the header and the footer information. The, the uh, cookie part of the Oreo, if you will. So the way that the system handled it is that there's one big section on the <clears throat> right hand side and you have the, the general tab and here you can see these fields and how some of those are represented here and again even the frequency of use even though it's in that area that would go down to the, the footer and then you have your conditions and your flow that I talked about just previously that would be the middle part or the filling of the Oreo. Now, I, it was important for me, and it may be a UI divergence for you, but I wanted to be able to try to keep on one screen and then just change tabs on the right and then have it organically create my use case. So instead of creating the bigger fields of the business rules and the other info and the assumptions that you see down here, I broke these up into s smaller tabs because I don't normally need to see the frequency of the use the same time I do the business rules. So those would show up as smaller little tab data entry points inside of the whole. And the collection of these, the aggregate of these, would create, again, the header and the footer of our use case. So again, looking at the bigger use case, We'll go ahead and take away that header and that footer, and this is what I would consider the body, the, the meat of the use case. And so the preconditions and the postconditions, again, these are almost headers and footers of the meat, <laughs> if you will, because when you execute this scenario, you have a set of preconditions that need to be met for that scenario to be valid, and then a set of post conditions that will be used to make sure that it was executed uh, correctly in the system. And I had talked about this before, we, we the general tab, right, and all the things are underneath it, and then we had the uh, conditions tab underneath that. Now in the conditions we have sub tabs as well. So I use a lot of tabs and again you may not want to have it designed that way but for me it worked really well. So anytime that I wanted to add this type of information I would click the conditions tab, add my preconditions in this list type of format and the post conditions down on that type of format. And then breaking that away. So then basically the same thing for the normal flow, alternate flow, and the exceptions. So when we clicked in that flow tab, then we'd have these sub tabs of normal, alternate, and exception. And inside of there, we'd give them a title. So you can see how the title matches up here. And then the listing of items that goes down. And that is reflected as going back and forth. Uh, some of the paste and the super trim, I'll cover those in the demo, but what those were is a method to facilitate if I was entering a use case that was created in another tool like a Microsoft Word document or Excel or something else like that. If I was taking legacy data and bringing it into my tool and then using it for either that particular project or, and again, this tool does allow you to duplicate and edit use cases. That's a very powerful feature of it. I could consume a, an older use case that I like and then use it as a foundation for use cases going forward. So just a couple more slides and we'll finish up the PowerPoint presentation and then the demo will be in a separate movie available on my website. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of a quick look on how this could look when it's copied and pasted into Microsoft Word. So here is the tool itself, and that's the, the one record that we were using for most of this presentation. So you were able to copy this wrap-up and then paste it into uh, Microsoft Word. And then all I did was take the, the title and give that a heading of uh, three, and then 
but actually I think it's a heading of two. And then the heading one for the product specifics and use cases, mostly as placeholders. And then inserted a your general first option available table of contents in Microsoft Word, and it automatically starts building it. So there probably are going to be ways to automate more of the interactions between FileMaker Pro and Microsoft Word. I haven't gotten there yet, and but that will probably be one of the very next steps that I do. So that's a wrap-up of the presentation, and again, I am planning on making a separate movie on a demo of the tool, and you can find that at my website at thepracticalba.com or its uh, sister site, DwayneWright.com. Thank you for watching.